Welcome back to the show and thank you for staying with us. Spice Girls, good and bad relationship advice in one girl group. <laughs> I would say that we're quite good advice, but you know, I was listening to them when I was six or seven. Now, as an adult though, I didn't realize seven, that man. my friends do not, you know, sometimes uh, your friends could not like your spouses and that could affect your judgment towards a relationship. See, bad but advice. That ne not necessarily, you know, will reflect the relationship. Um, here is actually a very interesting thing. Uh, 90, 90, sorry, 93% of singles in Malaysia actually desire long-term relationships. And perhaps because of the pandemic, you know, not being able to go out, not being able to go on dates. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Um, Are you saying they're hypocrites? No, they're not. <laughs> but percent actually has not gone on dates uh, oh, this year itself. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, now with the MCO understand, understand. having been lifted, we can travel, we can go out, we can dine in. Okay, perhaps okay. some of y'all, the 63% can go on dates finally instead of swiping left and swiping right. Oh, swiping left, swiping mm -hmm. right. I, I've never done that, so I don't really know. But it seems like it's a very, uh, very nuanced, simplistic way of choosing uh, someone you want to go on a date with just by looking at a picture and reading a profile, right? So yeah. swipe left, swipe right if you like the person. I, I don't know. I think there yeah. should be a lot more to it than that. Exactly. But I think that's why is, a lot of um, dating apps as well have um, diversified in terms of really? how, yeah, how okay. they approach um, these things because, you know, um, the original app that went popular, we, we can't really name it, uh, most of it was based on looks and most of it, uh, they did not actually want to have a relationship. It was more of a companionship. Yeah. Uh, mm. It was more of a, you know, when you go for traveling, you want to meet a guy and then uh, you want to go on dates and then go out. It's not a long-term thing. So, so it's a no strings attached kind of situation. Yes, no strings attached kind of situation. But now apps have diversified and um, they have included, you know, common interests. Um, they've included, um, you know, the girls can actually ask first for the person to go out. So many, many different ways for you guys to go virtually dating. Um, but we're going to actually ask why a lot of people are choosing to stay single. I, I think uh, the answers are a lot more complicated than we may assume, mm -hmm. but we have Violet Lim, who's the founder of Lunch, actually. Uh, she's joining us via Zoom from across the causeway. Thank you very much, Violet, for being here. Hi, hi guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Welcome to the program. So, um, the first question is, are more and more people, especially in Singapore, Malaysia, and in this region, mm -hmm. uh, choosing yes. to stay single? Um, I would say that they are not choosing to stay single, you know, like I think as uh, you have mentioned just now from the survey that we have conducted, actually 93% of singles in Malaysia want to be in a long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, it might not really be a choice, so to say, but it's really more like maybe some of the challenges that they are currently facing. And I think with the pandemic, that has not been helpful as well. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, we have seen that um, a lot of them, they actually want to find someone, but they are having challenges actually going on a date. So for example, we have found out that um, 60, 63% of singers uh, did not go on any physical dates during this pandemic. Yeah, and 66% uh, of them did not go on a virtual date as well. So, so I think, you know, wow. obviously, if you want to find someone, you need yeah. to go out there and meet people. So if right. you're not going on dates, it's going to be quite challenging. I really feel for people who are single and yes. have to date during this pandemic. Right? Yeah. I would never yes. have made it through <laughs> the pandemic, right? <laughs> Trying to go on dates during a situation like this must have been the most difficult thing in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Um, it, so, it, it has been quite challenging. Mm -hmm. yeah. So besides, um, not, besides um, you know, the pandemic being a factor of people not being able to go on dates, uh, regardless yes. virtually or, or physically, what are some of the yes. factors or some of the other reasons uh, people are not in a relationship or, or chooses to not be in a relationship? Yeah, so I think, you know, you were talking about mm. apps just now. So definitely apps has opened up, um, I would say, uh, a, a lot of options. You know, mm. like people can go on apps and swipe and chat. Mm. Uh, however, the challenge with apps is that um, there are also a lot of scammers. There are a lot of people who right. are catfishing. And after a while, you know, like the swiping fatigue will also like kick in. So Ooh. I think that's also one of the reasons like people are finding it a bit more challenging to be using uh, apps to find someone. Mm. And in fact, you know, mm -hmm. like in this year's survey, one thing that has actually come out as well, I think like uh, some of our singles are also being affected, you know, like by the uh, COVID fatigue, you know, they're also feeling like more uh, stressed. They're also feeling a bit of a hit to their mental health as well. And in fact, um, some of them have shared with us, you know, it's like um, they are feeling that, you know, 
they don't feel as confident about uh, meeting people. They don't feel as confident about dating. They don't really feel like going on dates. And uh, one of the things that uh, was quite worrying, I thought, was that 63% of the people who feel that their mental health has been affected actually say that I don't think that there are any more good men or good women out there. Oh so, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, I think that that so, very often yeah. that would be the reason, right? They say that, oh, I can't find a good man. I can't find a good girl. I can't find a good yes. woman. Wow. Yes. It, it, is it also because, uh, you know, we've been so inundated mm -hmm. by media and uh, that yes. kind of has skewed our perception? Or maybe the definition of a good man is Chris Hemsworth's tall. And that's <laughs> like an impossible standard for men to live up to. Yes, yes, you you are you are not wrong. Um, I think with uh, Korean dramas as well. Oh so yes. I, <laughs> so I, I think it's quite interesting that more and more women like who come to us, they say that they are open to dating younger men mm -hmm. because I mean, if you know those of you who are uh, familiar with Korean dramas, that there's actually a genre called like Nuna romance, which is like older women dating younger men. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I, I think. Yeah. But I think the reality is also it's like uh, most of the time, you know, like men are looking to date uh, women who's about their age or younger and women are looking to oh. uh, date men who are older or about the same age, right? So I think you're not wrong to say that um, some of this media, be it like dramas, be it like what we see in magazines mm. or, you know, on the internet might have skewed the expectations. Mm -hmm. And as a, a response to that, you know, people might become a bit more picky and then they will be like, oh, you know, like uh, that person that doesn't really like fit into like uh, my ideal of of like uh, the perfect man or woman for me. Yeah, I th I think uh you you know the um this series called You, uh starring Penn Badgley, uh, and he the, the premise of the story is that he stalks his um love interest right, and Whoa. a lot of people because of um amazing ac acting from Penn Badgley, but a lot of people started romanticizing the idea of um if I were to date a person, that uh -huh. person has to do everything for me or has to be so committed to me. So do you think the expectation as well, um, not in terms of looks, but in terms of um, how a person should be treated, right. um, also plays a factor into why people or, or why relationships don't happen? Um, there, there is a, a chance of that and especially mm -hmm. sometimes we're starting to see singers who um, may not have been in a relationship before like mm -hmm. so maybe when they are younger you know like their parents mm -hmm. tell them that uh, study hard get good grades you know like don't ever get into a relationship and then when they come to us they might not have really been in a serious relationship they might have dated so um, like what you have said you know certain things that they see on certain of these dramas like I, I mean this is a, a, a very old one like Twilight right long, mm -hmm. a long time ago but, but it's like you know, a lot of people are like so into that whole idea, you know, like the guy must be strong. At the same time, he must be sensitive, you know, mm -hmm. he must love me. He must like watch over me even when uh, I'm sleeping. But I mean, he's a vampire, right? That's why he doesn't need to sleep. But, <laughs> but you, you, you get what I mean? It's yeah. like there's there's some of these notions of uh, romanticizing of like what um, our um, a partner should be. So actually, yeah. when we meet up with singers, um, we do go through their preferences. We do ask mm -hmm. them about, you know, what are their criteria. But at the same time, you know, we also have to manage these expectations and I think because they see us as like experts you know like when it comes to like dating because we work with so yep. many singers they are also more likely to just listen to our feedback and our suggestions as well so you know sometimes they might say that okay I want someone who is this 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 that 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 you know for example they say I want a guy who's like 1.85 you know because mm -hmm. like Korean dramas right all the oppas are like super tall Yeah. <laughs> but then you know we'll just kind of like kind of bring them back to earth and say okay do you know what is the average height of like a man in Malaysia for example yep. and then you know we'll share with them the average height is actually 1.71 so, so then yeah Her and then they'll it. be like oh okay <laughs> so so I, I think these are some of the things that uh, we yeah. want to share with them and ultimately we also say that when you're looking for someone like we understand superficial criteria for example mm -hmm. height you know for example like maybe career you know for example uh, the outlook is very important but mm -hmm. what makes a relationship you know continue or whether for a marriage to last mm -hmm. is actually more on the significant criteria which is mm -hmm. really about you know like um how good this person is in terms of going to be a good father, a good husband, you know, like loyalty, compassion. So, you know, we just help to refocus them on what is the uh, most important thing 
when right. it comes to finding, you know, like love in that sense. Yeah. Right. How are you going to gauge that, you know, like loyalty? Yeah. Is there a metrics for loyalty or how someone can, mm-hmm. you know, stay committed? Is there a way to kind of <laughs> I, I wish there that? is. I wish there is. So uh, <laughs> to answer that, we, we can't. Yeah. But uh, what we do is like we spend, you know, one to two hours with our clients and mm-hmm. subsequently after that, we also continue to have like feedback sessions with them. Mm. So, you know, like at least we are able to match them according to their values because we mm-hmm. feel that at the end of the day, uh, values compatibility of values is the most important so for right. example like That's some great. people like for them family is super important they mm. need to see their parents or uh, family like once a week you know like the other party might be like you know I'm fa- happy to see them like once in three years or something so the yeah. family values you know it, it needs to be compatible similarly like with uh, religious values with like um, how they handle money you mm-hmm. know like how they even see like uh, personal growth uh, self growth things like that so when we are doing the matching like we focus more on this to help them to uh, you know find someone who is more compatible with them because we feel that that's something that will keep uh you know like make or break mm-hmm. a relationship right. now, you know I, I i'm i'm indian and uh the indian movie idea of romance mm-hmm. i mean <laughs> the, the idea i grew up with anyway was that you meet yes. someone and then there's this yes. instant connection and then in yes. your head you are dancing around coconut trees and <laughs> you know, duetting and having all that drama. Uh, yes, yes. So somewhere, somehow, that, that image uh, is still pretty much in the psyche of some people. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I also think to a large extent, that's been totally uh, disintegrated yeah. by what we've been yeah. discussing so far. Because yes. the requirement yes. is a lot more uh, than just that mm-hmm. physical first uh, sight connection. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, how yes. can we build this without the help of um, a third party or without the help of gadgets? Because today in this, well, we're still in the pandemic, mm-hmm. <laughs> in this pandemic-ridden yes. <laughs> uh, world, uh, yes. I think making that connection is going to be a lot more difficult. So mm-hmm. what kind of tips yes. can you share with singles out yes. there, uh, especially in the area of looking for red flags? Yes, I I think first and foremost, I think like what you mentioned, right? It's really about looking within because I think a lot of times when singles are looking for love, they are always looking on the outside. They're like, okay, what do I want? You know, Mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, these are my criteria, you know, like they have all of these like checklists and things like that. But honestly, the first step is really like you need to know who you are and like Mm -hmm. what you want and are you even ready for a relationship? Right. So I think that self-work is actually very important because if not, if you're not even clear what you want, like you just kind of like put a blank blank state out there, you know, it's, it's, it's very, it's very uh, challenging as well. Mm-hmm. And I think the next thing um, to look out for is, I mean, especially people who are using apps, I always mm-hmm. say when something is too good to be true, chances are it is too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, it's like other than um, like people that you might meet online, they, there are a lot of scammers and it mm. is very scary. And they are not like just, you know, one or two people doing this. They are actually syndicates. They have oh test gosh. out A, B testing, what line work, what line doesn't work. They know exactly how to make you fall in love with them, even if it's just through online. So um, just be really careful about that. And if you're going to meet up with someone, like make sure someone else know about it. Like they're going to check yeah. on you. Maybe just give you a call five minutes in your date to ensure that uh, everything is okay. Um, and I think um, ultimately it's really having a positive mindset mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, you know, like to not give up because, you know, like we talk about just now about the mindset some singles they will be like oh you know like there's nobody out there for me like mm-hmm. all the good men out there in the world are like date married or gay you know it's like if you constantly <laughs> think that like it doesn't matter how many good men you know like me as a matchmaker put in front of you or you meet on your own you will just think this person is not good because all good men are like doesn't exist right yeah so yeah. um and i think it's important to know that you just need one ultimately right mm-hmm. like even though you you keep meeting darts or you keep getting rejected or you just doesn't seem to get anywhere but just remember at the end of the day you just need one so you know it might be tiring sometimes you might just mm-hmm. want to take a break and that's that's per- perfectly fine you know like just right. go explore a new hobby yeah. you know catch up with your friends but ultimately you know like do not use that as a defense mechanism because you know i believe that there is someone out there for everyone Mm. so you know like just uh, keep a positive mindset and yeah. just keep going I mean I love that you know that's why you're a TEDx, TEDx, TEDx speaker because you're very positive <laughs> and you give that um, um, good impression so speaking of which for our singles out there because I have a couple of friends who uh, while I was away went to my husband and like you know was asking for advice on how to how to um, attract uh, or how to maintain a relationship or how to you know make that first good uh, first impression it's easy to show your abs <laughs> 
Done. We're, we're, we're trying to go beyond physicality here. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Amanda, do you have any um, tips or, or, or uh, uh, things you want to share on how to, you know, keep a good impression and how to keep a, uh, 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 try to make sure that, you know, the person, uh, female or male, have the second and third and fourth date and eventually, you know, will yes. we'll get into the long-term relationship? Very good question, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to give you, you know, the usual uh, tips that you read, you know, like be punctual, dress well, and things like that, because yeah. you can already find that on internet. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what I want to say is that remember the objective of a first date is to score a second date. That's ah. all. That is the objective. Okay. And then you need to remember that you know with dating apps, people are going to meet a lot of people. They are not just chatting with you. They are not just meeting with you. Yeah. Chances are they are meeting a lot of other people, and. People always talk about the same thing all the time. They are going to ask you things like, oh, no, what do you do? What is your hobbies? What do you like to do in free time? What are mm-hmm. your interests? So the, the mistake a lot of people make is they just kind of jump around. They are like, oh, you know, I like watching movies. You know, like these are the movies I watch. I like, you know, like um, I playing golf. You know, it, it doesn't go deep. And mm-hmm. that's the problem. If you have gone on like 10 first dates and like everybody just kind of like just go on the surface, right? Like who are you going to decide on who to choose or like who is going to leave an impression? So my suggestion is that prepare like anecdotes, prepare little stories, short uh-huh. stories, you know, like sweet stories to help you to share who you really are. Wow. For example, you know, like you're someone who is like very family oriented. You know, right. like you cannot like go out and say when people go on a date, they say, oh, so tell me about you. And you say that like, I'm very family oriented. It's very weird, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so it's like, you know, just prepare stories. Like, for example, they ask you, uh, what do you do in your free time? What do you do during weekend? And of course, I mean, don't make this up, right? I mean, just make sure mm-hmm. it's part of like uh, who you are. So, for example, like let's say on weekends, you actually go to your parents' place, you know, like, mm-hmm. so you can say something like, oh, I actually go to my parents' place, you know, like, I enjoy cooking. So, yeah. sometimes I'll just whip up some dishes for my parents so they can try it together. Oh. So, you know, immediately in this short story, people know that, oh, you know, you have filial piety, mm-hmm. you enjoy spending time with your parents, you like cooking, you like experimenting with new things. Yeah. So, so it's like use this opportunity to showcase who you are because ultimately when people look back at each day, they cannot mm-hmm. remember all these facts. What they remember are stories. Yeah, mm. yeah, I yeah, yeah. agree. I, I, um, how much of these stories or how much of these, um, especially for, for our friends out there who do have you know online profiles, how much should yes. they, I would say, uh, 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 make themselves look good? You know, mm. how much should they polish the story? How much yeah. fluff is needed? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think ultimately it's like be yourself. Like definitely mm-hmm. do not like, you know, polish it to the point that it's not you anymore. Like what we always work with our singers because we do coaching as well. Mm-hmm. What we are trying to help singers with is to be the best version of themselves. So, you know, like rather than just say, uh, I stay in Sungai Bulo, you know, like I, I drive a car, you know, things like very basic stuff. Yeah. You just want to share like a bit of like uh, insight into who you are, but when you're writing the profile, you don't want to share too much as well because the idea is that you want people to be curious to right. then message you and then ask you more. So, you know, like for example, mm. if you say that um, I, I enjoy traveling, like you know, a lot of people will say that I enjoy traveling and then it's like, okay, so why is that interesting, right? So rather than just saying I enjoy traveling, you can say something like my last trip was to like um, Iceland, for example. I mean, again, please make sure it's true, lah, right? So yeah. like, let's say my last trip was to Iceland and it was fantastic. And you know, I'm looking for my next big adventure. Like, so if you've been to somewhere really cool and nice, you know, like share yeah. with me, like what is your best adventure? Right, wow. so as a person who is looking at that, I'm like, oh wow, this person is really adventurous. You know, like same thing as me, and I can use this as an opener and say, yeah. I would love to go to Iceland, but I've been to like I don't know, like I've to, I've been to climb Mount Fuji. Yeah, like mm. you know, would you like to know more about that? Wow. Okay, so ah. that, that's a lot of interesting stuff that you can add on to your yes. dating TEDx speech. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which you're going to be using. Uh, but, you know, for, for guys like me, we come polished. So you have to take us one way or the other. <laughs> we are always polished. Uh, I, I would like to say a big thank you to Violet. But before you go, mm-hmm. um, maybe just share a little bit of uh, how you can be reached. How can they contact you mm-hmm. if they require any further information on how to move on with their dating life? <laughs> Okay, so um, definitely they can check us out at our website, uh, which is uh, lunchactually.com or I'm on IG as well. So, you know, like we are at, on Lunch Actually and I have my IG, uh, Violet Lim. So, you mm-hmm. know, like feel free to just follow me. I uh, do share dating tips here and there. And yes, you know, like uh, hoping, to, uh, I, I would say, you know, to all the singers out there, like I mentioned just now, most important is like keep a positive mindset and mm-hmm. do not give up. And remember, you just need one. 
All right. All right. Love All right. it. Love it. That's going to be good. my Instagram quote for the day. Um, <laughs> just you just need one. Need one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you so much, Violet. I hope you have a great okay, and no amazing problem. day. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. You know, um, I think for singles out there, maybe the next thing you guys, instead of going out on a date, you guys mm. can bring your future dates out for like art festival, you know, something that's slightly different. I don't know, I, I, but whatever it is, mm -hmm. don't trust anything you read in the Twilight Saga because they did not do their research. Vampires don't glow in sunlight, they burn. Yes, yes, exactly. They don't glow. Rubbish. All and, three of the books are oh. rubbish. <laughs> I love reading the books though. I love reading the books. Uh, again, it is all fiction, 